In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a unique glitch transition using standard effects. Hi, my name is Manuel. I'm a freelance motion designer. To follow along, you might want to download the project file. My comp is 60 frames long, 1920 by 1080. The footage to pictures are slightly zooming in. I animated the scale. The cut is after 30 frames. I downloaded these pics from Unsplash. Thanks to anybody who uploads there. It's an amazing resource. Now, you want to be able to change the footage later. Therefore, we pre-compose these two solids. Select them, go to layer and choose pre-compose. We want to move all attributes into the new composition. Oh, almost forgot. Let's name the comp footage. And let's add a new folder named precoms and move it in there. Next, back to our main comp. We create a solid by pressing command Y, color doesn't matter, and add turbulent noise. For now, let's set the fractal type to small bumps. The noise type to block. Let's crank up the contrast to around 600. The brightness to 45. We go into transform and deselect uniform scaling. Set the scale width to around 250, the scale height to around 20. Let's animate the evolution. We go to the beginning of the glitch transition and set a keyframe. Then we move to the end of the transition and set the evolution to 5 times 0 degrees. We have a constant movement throughout the transition. Let's add directional blur. Set the direction to 90 degrees and the blur length to 20. This will create a more organic glitch effect. Then we add CC Scale Wipe. Set the direction to minus 90. Move the center point to the right border and set Stretch to 10. Now we pre-compose this layer as well. Move all attributes into the new comp and name it Displacement Map. Let's go back to our main comp. First of all, we make the displacement map comp invisible. We need the displacement map to affect our footage. Therefore, we add the displacement map effect to our footage comp. Choose the displacement map layer source. And set use horizontal and vertical displacement to luminance. Changing the displacement values, we can see the effect on the footage already. If you don't want to have these black holes, click wrap pixels around. Next, we need to animate the displacement map. Open the displacement map comp. In the comp we go to 20 frames and set a keyframe for fractal type, scale width and height, direction and stretch. For the first frame everything's fine except we set stretch to zero. If you press U, only the attributes with keyframes will show up in the timeline. Then we move one frame to the right and set the fractal type to strings. The scale width to 450, height to 75 and stretch to 10. We move to frame 23 and set the scale width to 600 and set a keyframe for the height. One frame later we set the fractal type to small bumps. Those keyframes are toggle hold keyframes. They hold the set value until the next keyframe without any animation or change in between. We change the scale width to 200 and the height to 20 and stretch to 6. We press Shift T to make the opacity property visible in the timeline. Then we set a keyframe for the opacity and at 25 frames we set it to 0. Oh, same thing, reverse order at the beginning of the animation. Alright, let's have a look into our main comp. There, we need to animate the max horizontal and vertical displacement. We set a keyframe for both values at 20 frames. Press U to see them in the timeline. Horizontal displacement is around 70, vertical displacement around 20. Then one frame later, let's set them to 1500 and 315. Then at 24 frames, we set them to 520. Let's have a look. These values are kind of random. Important is, the animation has a nice flow. Let's add brightness and contrast. Set them to 0 at 19 frames, then at 20 frames let's set them both to 100. Then at 22 frames let's get dark and set the brightness to minus 125. Then at 24 frames back to 100. 
then at 26 frames, both to zero. Now we need more color. We duplicate the footage layer, then delete the brightness and contrast effect, press U and delete these keyframes as well. Then link the max horizontal and vertical displacement to the corresponding properties of the layer below. Meaning we only have to set the keyframes once for both effects. Now let's add a glow. Settings are fine. We want the glow on the actual glitches, not on the whole picture. So we use the displacement map as a luma track map for the top footage layer. <laughs> Just checking. Awesome. Then let's add a tritone. I hope I pronounced that right. And set the colors. I chose a green, red, blue combination. First part is done. Back to our displacement map. Let's animate the second glitch. First of all, let's duplicate these keyframes by selecting them and pressing Command C, then Command V. Then move the end one frame to the right to make it a bit longer. We want to be as effective as possible, so I think to copy and paste keyframes and then change some of the settings is a great way. Let's set the stretch to 6 here at the beginning, then move one frame to the right and set the fractal type to basic. Set the scale width to around 400, the height to around 80. Let's change the blur direction to 180 degrees. We want a full screen glitch here to hide the cut. At 31 frames, let's set the fractal type to subscale. One frame later, Let's set the scale width to 2800 and the height to around 200. One frame later, let's set the blur direction back to 90 degrees. Finally, let's move to 38 frames and copy the first glitch. Delete the last row to make it shorter. Back to the main comp. We quickly need to copy and adjust the keyframes here. It's moving some keyframes a frame to the left or right and changing some keyframe values so that it feels more random. Speaking of random, all keyframes values in this tutorial are kind of random and very much up to personal taste. I added this video I got from Vimeo stock to the displacement map, set the blending mode to silhouette luma, which adds a lot of pixels and dust detail to the glitches. You could also add scatter, for example, to add more dust. I guess it's time for you to play around for a while. Like I did before recording this, you'll get some crazy results. On the left side, I've added some videos you might like. Subscribe to my channel on the right side and ring the bell if you want to know exactly when the next video is coming out. Thanks so much for watching. Hope that tutorial was useful for you all. See you next time, guys. Bye!